right, here we go. Did we, oh, there's Julia, okay. Which one of these works best. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Julia. Um, we're getting started and I think we anticipate uh, another couple of people joining us uh, as we move along here. Ah, oh, there's Emmy. Welcome back, Emmy. Um, so I'm Martin Johnson, I'm, I'm Dean of the Manship School and of course, uh, Chelsea Rainwater is here. She helped organize this, so you've interacted with her. She's our student engagement coordinator. Uh, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Dr. Jinx Coleman Broussard, who is uh, just an extraordinary colleague and professor. Uh, we could spend the next half hour with me introducing her, uh, given her extraordinary list of accomplishments and distinctions, but I'll try to limit myself to a few. Um, Dr. Broussard holds the BART R. Swanson Endowed Memorial Professorship uh, in the Manship School and holds a PhD from the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, she is a genuine trailblazer in the sense that uh, she is the first African American to have earned a bachelor's degree in journalism uh, from LSU. Uh, and um, she spent years as a practitioner of public relations uh, working uh, as the Director of Public Information for the City of New Orleans, uh, as a public relations practitioner in uh, New Orleans and the region, uh, including uh, work as Director of University Relations at Dillard University, where she spent several years on faculty as professor and chair of their mass communication department. Uh, she's been on faculty at LSU and the Manship School uh, since the early 2000s and teaches uh, public relations, strategic communication, mass communication theory, uh, media history, and pedagogy, which is a fancy way to say that she teaches our graduate students how to teach. Uh, and so um, that's, um, that's uh, I think, a real uh, mark of distinction for the quality of, of her teaching. It's uh, evidence of her really fantastic teaching. She was uh, named last year the National Teacher of the Year by the Scripps Howard Foundation and the Association for Education and Journalism and Mass Communication, uh, and is the author of several publications, including three books, uh, last year's Public Relations and Journalism in Times of Crisis, uh, as well as two books on uh, the history of the black press. One focuses on foreign correspondence, African-American foreign correspondence, and uh, another focuses on women journalists uh, in the black press. Uh, and so I'm just really so pleased, uh, Dr. Broussard, that you could join us today uh, to meet with Julia and Emmy uh, and talk about public relations and talk about the Manship School and your background. What we're going to do is, is I'm going to start with a few questions and give you an I'll stop talking at some point here very soon. Uh, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. And then we want to leave some time for Julia and Emmy to, you know, participate in the conversation uh, as well. Hey, so thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Where, where I'd like to start is I'd like to ask you um, kind of in, in, in line with my notes of introduction, could you talk about your experience and how you got interested in journalism and media? Thank you so much, Martin, for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I, I got interested in journalism before I even knew what it was. I was about eight or nine years old and watched the news every day with my dad. We watched the local news and we watched the NBC nightly news with Chet Huntley and David Brinkley. <laughs> and um, I saw a female reporter and really paid attention to her, whose name was Pauline Fredericks. And I said to myself, I wanna do what she's doing. I was already giving little speeches at my elementary school. I was introducing the Christmas play. I was um, saying the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. And I knew that I liked to do that kind of public speaking, but I also was interested in information because my dad was always quizzing us about what was happening in the world. And I wanted to, I decided at that time that I wanted to not only find out about what was happening in the world, but I wanted to be right there where things were happening in the world and being able to let people know about it. And so at the age of about eight or nine, I decided journalism was for me. Fantastic. As I said, I didn't even know it was called journalism. I just said, I want to do what Pauline Fredericks is doing. 
Well, I think, I think my follow-up is kind of right in line with that. Can you talk a little bit about what journalism is and how it is similar and different uh, to public relations? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, everybody who knows me knows that I have these terrible allergies. Um, but I say that journalism seeks to seek the information um, do that reporting, find the information, seek the facts, present that information, often interpret that information. Whereas public relations practitioners do the same thing, but it's often on behalf of a, a client or an issue, and it also, often also involves advocacy on behalf of the client. I also say that journalism is outward going, outward facing, whereas public relations is more about building those mutually beneficial relationships between various clients uh, and the publics with which those clients have a, um, a dependency or have an interdependence. How, take us to that moment, you know, you, you and I have a not dissimilar uh, career path, although you were a practitioner for, for longer than I was. Um, I, uh, I started out like you, a, a journalist. I mean, we, we both had a period of time that we were working in news organizations. You worked in the New Orleans State Side uh, and then transitioned into, uh, into a career of public affairs advocacy, working, you know, first at, at Dillard uh, in uh, university relations, which is very closely related to journalism in terms of doing work yes. in the public interest for the purpose of education, ultimately. But how did how did that shift happen? You're a journalist, and 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 then you're doing public affairs advocacy. Well, I'll tell you that when I teach public relations, I tell the students that um, the early public relations practitioners were first journalists. So it wasn't an, um, an outgrowth for me; just a normal sequential out outgrowth of presenting information. I saw myself when I went to Dillard University as director of news and public relations as a journalist working for a university to allow and enable that university to build those relationships, build those relationships to communicate with the public. So in a sense, I saw myself as the journalist for Dillard University utilizing all of those reporting tools, all of those writing tools, all of those editing tools that I learned when I was in the Manship School to not only get Dillard's message across, but herein lies the difference to build those mutually beneficial relationships. So often as a journalist, we're telling the story, we're putting it out there, and of course there'll be pundits, there'll be columnists who are interpreting, but with, with public relations, the aim is to build those relationships, to have that harmonious relationship between the client, um, be that client an organization, be that client a person, a celebrity, you name it, an institution. But it's to build the relationship so that it can be lasting and ongoing. It's more than just writing that story and putting it out on um, via television or on radio or in the newspaper, and now, of course, via social media, via all kinds of channels. Excellent. And, you know, I, I feel like we see that so much in the school, um, you know, talking about the, the porosity between our, our majors. We've got, you know, we've got a lot of students that are studying public relations who are active in student media. Uh, we have, you know, students that are involved in publicity efforts for clubs and organizations, Greek life, you know, variety, but, but are, you know, seeking training in journalism. So I, 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 I definitely feel like we still see that today in, in those kinds of close connections. Oh, yes. In fact, when I, um, when I begin my, my classes at the beginning of the semester, I usually try to go over the differences between journalism and public relations, especially when I teach public relations writing, because it's a different type of writing from journalism, um, you know, the inverted pyramid and so forth and so on. You know, public relations writing can involve speeches, pitch letters, um, opinion pieces, letters to the editor, as well as news releases, 
that will follow the same guidelines as journalism. You know, it also occurs to me, I, uh, not to not to ask a question on behalf of Julia and Emmy, but um, what is inverted pyramid writing? What what what? Define a couple of the things that you were you were just talking about. Okay, well, you know, you can't go wrong, and I even tell this to my students in the PR class. You cannot go wrong if you start with the inverted pyramid: who, what, when, where, how, and why. And beginning with the most important information first, then amplifying that information. So. Um, that's that's basic to all writing, even with even with the public relations writing that we're doing. I tell the students, come up with a hook. You have to get the audience. Um, that audience might be the news director at a television station, or it can be the assignment editor um, at a at a television station, or the metro editor at a newspaper. But you have to hook that person with that information at the very beginning and that very first paragraph. Now we have writing in journalism where we kind of lead into it and then have that nut graph, maybe three or four paragraphs down. But within those, those uh, short paragraphs, you had better hook the reader. Otherwise, it's going in file 13. And the students look at me and say, what are you talking about, Dr. Broussard? And I said, well, just consider how many press releases um, a media person gets during the course of a day, as much as 100. So yours had better have something that is akin to the inverted pyramid or to that hook that will capture the attention of whoever is reading it where you want it to go so that it doesn't wind up in the trash can. So file 13 is just another more diplomatic way of saying that it's going in the trash if you don't learn how to write and if you don't learn how to write correctly and if you don't know what that inverted pyramid is and how to get your information across. I tell the students sometimes you only have two graphs. Sometimes you only have a sentence or two to get the attention of whoever the reader is. So you've already got us in the classroom. Uh, let me ask you, what, uh, what are your classes like? Um, what, what are your favorite assignments to give? What do you like to, to work on with students, particularly undergraduate students? Um, what, what's my classroom like? I think anytime someone would walk into my classroom, he or she is liable to see me walking around standing over students, guiding them, probing, asking, do you really think this is going to work? Have you considered something else? What's a, what's a different approach? Students might see me sitting on a desk. They might see me hovering over somebody. Typically in my public relations campaign class, um, I, uh, I break the students up into groups, um, teams. They eventually become companies. They choose a company name. But before even getting to that process, they have to apply for the positions just as they would be applying for a job in a regular public relations agency. We have an account executive slash liaison. We have a research director. We have a social media director uh, and a host of others. I, I won't give you the well, it's seven positions. So the students have to apply for those positions. And once they are in their um, companies, they then have to individually come up with company names and then brainstorm and select the name from whatever the group has come up with, with whatever the individuals has, have come up with. And from then on, they're, name, they're known as whatever name they come up with. So um, I'm just trying to think this semester, we had Emerge Public Relations and the students have to do more than select the name. They have to give me a rationale based on research, so they can't pull it off of Google or off the internet or find some other PR company. Not that I would ever accuse them of doing it, but they have to give me the rationale and they have to give me a logo. It doesn't have to be polished because this is not a visual communication class. And from there, and I have a mixture of lectures, but I don't just lecture, we have discussions. I am constantly throwing out questions to the students. I believe that uh, they have to be informed. They have to know what's happening in the world. So on the first day of class, I throw out what's called a nifty nugget, and it's something that I ripped from the headlines. Uh, for example, um, 
um, when Boeing was having its problems. And so I said, listen, there is a major entity that is international and it's been on the news all morning and it's been on the news all night. And um, can you all, who's ready to get two additional bonus points on your lowest grade for that answer? And so they'll start raising their hands and you know, and they would like, I had my hands up first, Dr. Broussard, and so I'll give people a chance and somebody might have half of the answer and so forth and so on. Um, so we do that and I do that almost every class period because it does help to keep the students um, informed about what's happening in the world or what's happening in Baton Rouge. I might ask uh, who just declared for mayor of Baton Rouge last week? Well, my goodness, you should know that because you're working with a client in the Baton Rouge area, a nonprofit, and you need to know who the mayor is or who's running for mayor in, in Baton Rouge. So that's, that's one thing that I do. And so once they're in their groups and they're brainstorming, and I brainstorm with them. So during the first half of the semester, we, I present information, I engage them in learning, they're engaged in learning every day. Brainstorming is very important with regards to their talking about their research, talking about their interaction with the public relations clients. Um, and then I'm sitting there, I move from group to group during the class because it's, almost, it's an hour and 50 minute class. And so um, I might spend 30 minutes with each group on the second day of the week. On the first day of the week, it's more taking care of the academic stuff. The uh, second class period has to do with the company, the running of the company. And so my, my style is very direct, students will tell you. So if somebody's sitting there um, not participating, then I find a way to bring that student in. I know you have an idea. Let's hear what you think, what might be a good tactic here for, um, for reaching African Americans who um, are in a much greater need of organs, but who might not uh, sign up as readily? What might be your message? So I don't just let students, you know, sit there and coast. They know that when they come to class, they have to be ready because Dr. Bruce Ord is going to put them on the spot. And my sister, who uh, was an educator and who trained teachers in St. James Parish, told me one time, "Change, you never put people on the spot. You never." Uh, you know, call on students and put them on the spot. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. You are going to be a participant in this class and in this discussion. And, and I give the students encouragement. I tell them, listen, you are going to have to work weekends because you are doing a service learning, you're in a service learning course. You're gonna to have to work weekends, you're gonna to have to work nights. Chelsea knows because she was in my class. Um, um, you are going to, you're going to have to work a lot. It's more than the 30 hours I have on the semester. You're going to have to work much more than that. But listen, guys, day one, here is my phone number because I am in this with you. And I'm not going to ask you to do anything without supporting you. And that makes a difference to the students. And I'll give you an example. Um, my students had an activity um, at a supermarket and it was to sign up people to be to inform people about organ donors and to try to sign up organ donors. It was on a Sunday and um, I showed up at the supermarket and I had my sunshades on. I had my little pedal pushers and my sandals and so the student said, Dr. Broussard, what are you doing here? And I said, the same thing you're doing here. We're both in this together. We're all in this together. And so that's what tends to, I, I, I tend to motivate them that way. They know that they can call me anytime before nine o'clock at night. And as I said, they get my phone number on the first day of class. And they know that I am going to get back to them within 24 hours. Oftentimes I stop what I'm doing. I have even attended my students' events on the night of wedding anniversaries. I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> I tend to get go overboard with my excitement about my students. And I try to engender that excitement with them. I try to empower them. I say, 
you can do this. And I'll give you another example and stop me if I'm talking too much. But I had a, <clears throat> um, one group of students one year was working with a client that dealt with um, staying and neutering of animals or something like that. And um, I had watched the news the night before and I saw a story about a farm in Folsom where horses were dying. You know, they were starving, I think two horses and so forth. So I came in and I offered a nifty nugget because the students should have been paying attention. Somebody from each group needs to be paying attention to the news every day. And so I threw out the nifty nugget, nobody got it. So I told them what had gone on. And then I sat with the company that was working on with the uh, organization, the spaying and neutering organization. So I said, how can you take this example and uh, pitch the news media on a story relative to your client. They were, and so they said, well, what does that have to do? And I said, it has to do with protection of animals, taking care of animals, being proactive and so forth and so on. And so I, I pointed to one student and I said, so who wants to work on a pitch to WAFB? And who wants to call WAFB? Who wants to volunteer to do that right now? And so I gave them different assignments right in the moment because we work in the moment. And so one student wrote the pitch. I looked at it and I said, okay, let's talk about this a little bit more. We don't need this much and whatever. And then the young man who had almost been roped into calling the TV station said, Dr. Broussard, how can I do that? I've never done anything that, like that. I said, let's go outside and practice. So we went outside the door, we practiced and, um, he called the station and he got an interview and he came in and he high-fived everybody. So that's how that particular class works. And of course, I interact with the students, with their clients. So I'll go to meetings with their clients sometimes if the client wants to. I've been working with clients now, the same clients, one client for almost seven years and another will be going into our third year. So I don't have to meet with them anymore or sometimes, not as often, because we know how everything operates. So that gives you an idea of my public relations campaigns class. Uh, my other classes are very similar. I just wanted really quick, because um, I do want to give Julia and Emmy an opportunity to uh, join the conversation, but just really quickly, could you clarify your clients and talk a little bit about LOPA and some of the other major clients that you tend to work with? Okay, I have been working with LOPA, as I said, for about seven years, and LOPA um, is an organization that seeks to create awareness of the need for and to get donors. Its primary responsibility is to add donors to the registry so that people who are in need of a kidney or a liver or a cornea or um, tissues um, will be more likely to get that to get you know, um, those organs. And so we have, we've been able to add, um, we've, we've done more than 2,000, maybe 3,000 hours with LOPA and we've, had, we've assisted LOPA in adding hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of people to the donor registry list. And that's over the last seven years. Those campaigns, my students have done campaigns uh, and submitted them for national awards. And in 2014, we've won first place national public relations campaign. Um, and uh, from PRSA, we won second place in 2015. We won first place again in 2016. And in 2017 and 18, my students did phenomenal campaigns. But so often they get involved in the campaign that the campaign book which speaks for the campaign, kind of gets put together at the last minute. And so while they've done award-winning caliber campaigns, I have not felt comfortable enough submitting the campaign books as representation for the campaigns. So that's what we do um, with LOPA. And I must tell you, Martin, and the rest of you on the, on, on the, um, the call, that I am so proud of my PR students this semester because they did not skip a beat. Um, the, the, the Thursday before 
classes were canceled. I brainstormed again with each group. I went from group to group to group and I said, okay, let's see what, what we might do um, if classes are canceled and we have to go remotely. Let's talk about how we are going to redirect. Um, and so we did that. One group decided that it would continue working and also maybe shift the focus of the campaign. This was with LOPA, shifted from the, the, the major event that we were gonna have at the end of the semester to doing more of a social media campaign. Um, they were able to do that, but they also were able to make things happen by um, um, carrying through with other goals and tactics that they had. For example, a blue and green um, day was coming up to recognize donor heroes. And so the students came up with the idea, okay, let's reach out to Manship faculty, to staff, to students, and ask them to wear blue and green on donor um, hero day. And they did that. Um, they continued to do more of those things. So the only thing that they did not do that we talked about at the beginning of the semester was have an in-person event everything else continued. They switched gears, as I said, and did more social media. We work with, I've been working with another client called the Gardeer Initiative, which provides services um, to um, a low uh, SES area, not very far from uh, Baton Rouge. And it's just a joy to work with Dr. Muriel Harrison uh, and her small team there. Um, she came to my attention a few years ago from a student, who, a student who was in my class who said, this organization is doing wonderful work. Um, right after Hurricane Katrina, a lot of people from New Orleans moved into the area. And after a while, um, more uh, Latinos, Latinxes moved into the area. There was conflict. Dr. Harrison wrote a grant and, and was able to secure the Gardeer Initiative and make it a, a reality to provide all kinds of services from computers to tutoring to other kinds of activities. And my students, I tell you, they have just gravitated and fallen in love with that initiative. As I said, we'd be going into our third year this year. And um, they didn't give up with when, when they started, when we went online, that group, which I think was called Peak PR, that was another name, Peak PR. Um, one of the, the account liaison wrote to me or con called me and she said, Dr. Broussard, um, Dr. Harrison is giving out groceries and masks and other kinds of things every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on, um, you know, in the Gardeer Initiative. So I said, okay, let's get Dr. Harrison on the phone. Let's find out what, what she's doing and so forth and so on. And I might have some of the facts, maybe a little bit incorrectly, but the gist of it is Catherine Roberts wrote a wonderful pitch letter to WAFB. This is one while they are at home, quarantine and so forth, and uh, pitched the story to WAFB. And guess what? WAFB covered that story. The council member for that area saw it and reached out to Dr. Harrison and said, listen, I want to support the initiative. The mayor's office saw it and the mayor contacted Dr. Harrison and said she wanted to be at the next giveaway. These are Manship PR students making things happen for their clients, which typically are nonprofits that are trying to do community good. And so we're doing this through the service learning model where we're trying to engage the students uh, and, and teach them about social responsibility. It's not like an internship class or an external class, it's service learning where we're, we're trying to, to assist these organizations in meeting those community needs. I mean, I am just thrilled that the student was still able to go on a coverage for um, the organization. And I don't want to let leave out the other group, which was called, it'll come to me, um, but they were working with an organization called Eat, Move, Grow, which was trying to address um, health and food and exercise needs in uh, four, I mean, 17 parishes or areas, okay? And um, 
So the student said, well, Dr. Bruce, we plan to launch a website and we were gonna reach out to the health educators and so forth. Well, they weren't able to do that, but they put together a detailed launch plan for the website with a timeline for everything and with examples of what could go on the website. In addition to that, one of the students did an activity book for health educators to distribute to parents that parents could distribute to students. And I was so impressed because they even included links to museums, links to um, fun activities that students could, um, um, you know, uh, click on and be exposed to. They had an activity coloring book. Uh, they did a video showing the kids how to wash their hands and, and so forth. And they wrote a little jingle to go with that. So again, the campaigns continued because the seeds are planted, the fervor is there, the dedication to the client and to meeting that community need is there. And if I recall, You've got me. You've got me started talking. So just tell me when to stop. But I'll give you one more example. I'll give you two examples. Um, but on one example, at the end of the fall semester, a group that had walked, worked with the Gardier Initiative, and the Gardier Initiative is serving primarily young black kids and parents or, or guardians or whomever, and the same with Latino. One of the students after the presentation of the campaign and that group did an awesome job in the fall also. She said, um, Dr. Broussard, those little kids at Gardeer have just placed a hand on my heart. Now what better testimony? You know, that's education in more ways than a book could ever do. To have students come to the realization, one, that people are people, that, uh, that children of all races are wonderful, and that students from manship can make a difference. They can take their education and what they are learning in the classroom and make a difference. And then come out with something that says that that Gardeer initiative has just placed a hand on my heart. And a little background, the hand is the, the um, emblem for the Gardeer initiative. So, and then I've talked a lot about the clients, but let me just give you an example about how students grow in that class. So fall semester of last year, a student came into the class, and I won't say he or she, but that student didn't know a lot about public relations. And I was saying things, and the student was challenging me. And so you know, I'm like, OK, all right now, OK, just, just, just be understanding, Jing. So I'd call the student up, and we'd talk through it and everything. And then after a while, I saw him beginning to you know, really chime in and participate in the discussions. And every time he did, I might've high-fived him. And I might've said, oh, I, I've already given you the gender now, but I might've high-fived him and said, all oh, right now. You know, I do those kinds of things too. I do a lot of high-fiving, you know. Uh, and so on the last day of class for the presentation, he had a nice shirt on with a little tie and some nice slacks. And so I came in and I said, look at so-and-so. All right, look at so-and-so. And then he made his, he did his part of the presentation. And I was so impressed and I wanted him to know that. And I said, I called his name three times. And I said, blank, blank, blank. I remember three months ago, you came into this program and you did not know the first thing about a PR campaign. And I said, look at you. You are ready to go out and be a professional. And he said, he turned around, turned away from me and from the class because he was about to cry. And then I looked and the students were crying. And, but I just wanted him to know that I recognized his growth. And for graduation, you know, I'm not a big person. He grabbed me in a bear hug and lift me up off, lifted me up off the floor. So Martin and everybody, that is why I do my job. That is what I want to do. I want to change people's lives. I want to help them change people's lives. I want to bring out the best in them so that they can take that with them wherever they go in life. So that's just an example from my, P those are just examples from my PR campaigns class.
Well, I wonder if Julia or Emmy might have some questions or um, some things they might want to talk a little bit about. So I see that Emmy uh, has a question here. Hi, Dr. Broussard. What would you say has been your most memorable experience in your career as a PR practitioner? Well, I will tell you that before I came to the Manship School, I, taught, I thought that my job uh, as press secretary to the mayor of New Orleans and as director of public information was the best experience. And let me tell you, it was phenomenal. I met presidents and popes. You know, just to be at the seat, I was in and out of the White House. Of course, I wasn't doing anything except accompanying my boss and getting ready for the press conference afterwards. So that was, those were phenomenal experiences. But my experiences at Dillard University and at LSU with young people, those are the best experiences of my life. Because what, what more can you do in life than to try to impact the lives of others? And so while working for the mayor's office was great for me, I loved it. I had all kinds of experiences, but my experiences in the classroom and mentoring students and hearing from them 10 years down the road 15 years down the road saying, you know, thank you, Dr. Broussard. I don't do it for the thank yous. I'm just happy when I hear from them and find out what they are doing. I'm just like a little kid. I run home and I say, guess what I heard from so-and-so? And guess what so-and-so is doing? And guess what? Chelsea is now working in the manship school. And I remember when she almost single-handedly took that darn campaign book and redid it, right? Okay, so those, so um, Julia, those are the experiences. There's not one professional experience that I've had that's better than my impacting the lives of young people in and out of the classroom. Great. Other questions? Let's see. Ah, so thank you. You're Julia, do you have any questions that you might like to talk through? Hi, Julia. I just wanted to say real quick, um, you seem so positive and I love your attitude. Um, because I didn't know really what I wanted to do at LSU uh, until somewhat recently. I was really torn between political communication and public relations. Oh, and a lot of people like my family and friends, when they ask me what my degree is going to be, I tell them public relations. They're like, Okay, that's interesting, because I don't really know how to describe it to them. Um, but hearing what you have to say, that really um, makes me think that my decision was the right one. Well, great, great, great. And there are a lot of similarities between political communication and public relations. What I did before I came to, to LSU um, could be called political communication because I was working in that arena for eight years with the mayor and directing what we call public information, but it was... Um, it was a form of political communication. Working in the mayor's campaign for his second term, that was political communication all the way. Coming up with the strategies, tactics, um, um, events that we needed to do. Um, identifying who our different audiences were and trying to reach them. We do that in PR, we do that in political communication. So there, there are quite a bit of similarities there. And I'll, I'll just chime in to add, uh, there, there isn't um, quite the rigidity of that in the Manchester School. I mean, one of the things right. that's significant is that the school is organized with areas of concentration where students in political communication and public relations are working together very frequently in their classes. And same thing with the journalism students and the same thing with the digital advertising students. There's a lot of you know, kind of intellectual sharing and overlap. And um, one of the, I, and I'd love for you to give your perspective on it, Dr. Broussard. One of, in my view, one of the strongest clubs that we have in the school is the Public Relations Student Society of America. And that organization is a really strong, robust organization with lots of members and just fantastic leadership. Uh, and it attracts members from the whole of the student body. Um, do you want to talk you, a little you, bit about PR you, system? You, you've summed it up very well. Um, we have the best and the brightest students. Of course, all of our students are bright, um, but you know we like to 
do a little claiming here, but the students in PRSA, SSA come from the various areas within the Manship School and they make things happen. Similar to what I've just talked about in the, uh, that, we, that, that I do in the classroom. PRSSA does that also. Um, and there's also, um, you know, the PRSSA students participate in the Bateman competition, which won the national out of one, I think 86 teams participated nationwide and Manship School walked away as the winner. And we didn't field the team the next year because we didn't feel the students were ready. We we're only going to present, um, we we're only going to participate when we definitely feel that it's going to be a good reflection on our program and on our students and on the Manship School. So PRSSA has guest speakers, it has um, different types of workshops, including diversity workshops, uh, provides all kinds of opportunities for students to get involved. And even within PRSSA, there's also Imprint, which is a student-run agency that also works with one, two, three clients, depending on the number of students who participate. And so all of the public relations faculty have the same approach with regards to providing every opportunity for exposure, for hands-on experience, as well as for enlightenment. So that the students, I tell my students, um, that when they leave the Manship School, um, they will not only be able to talk the PR talk, i.e. goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics, they're going to be able to walk like public relations professionals because that's what they learn how to be. They get the academic foundation, they get the knowledge, they get the theory that undergirds what they are trying to do, but they also get a chance to apply and operationalize what they're doing. Yes, it's hard work, but at the end of the semester, they're excited, they're crying, they're hugging me. Some even say, thanks, mom. I'm like, okay, what's this? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, but it gets to be that kind of a relationship. And students often tell me also, Dr. Broussard, I was afraid to take your class because I heard that you're so hard and that you have to work so hard. And I always tell them the story about one young lady who on the first day of class um, asked to see me outside. And I went outside with her and she said, Dr. Broussard, she had tears in her eyes. And she said, I want to take this class because I know I'm going to benefit from it. But all of my friends are in the other classes because they said that you are this and you are that. And so I told her what I just said. I said, let me tell you, yes, I am demanding, but I demand excellence. And you can rise to the occasion. I said, so if you stay, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to stay in this class. You do whatever you think is best. But if you stay in this class, you're going to be able to walk the PR walk. You're going to be a PR professional while just a student because you will have come up against every kind of crisis, every kind of uh, alternative situation. You're going to be able, you will have problem solved, you will have done research, will have conceived of, planned, implemented, and evaluated a comprehensive public relations uh, campaign for a client. That is what they do in the real world, and you're doing it in the manship school. So she stayed in the class. One day I was driving to New Orleans, and I was listening to um, the Jim Inkster show on WRKF, and I heard a voice talking about the client and something that the students were promoting, and I said, oh, wow, that sounds like so-and-so. Now, listen, this is how I get almost crazy, okay? So I'm driving to New Orleans, and so Jim Inkster thanks the young lady. So I pull off a side on the highway, and I had her phone number because she was doing so much. And I called her up and I said, I just heard you on the Jim Inkster show. She and I both started screaming. This is crazy, but this is what we do. It's a PR agency. We gotta have a little bit of hype and rah, rah, rah. I said, you rock. 
And let me tell you, on the last day of class, she called me outside again. She had tears in her eyes again. And she said, Dr. Broussard, you told me that if I stayed in this class, I was going to be able to walk the PR walk. And she said, I'll let you in on another little secret. I've been blogging about service learning and experiences in the service learning classes anonymously. And I have talked about this class. I said, let me tell you, you are a star. So that's the kind of reinforcement my students get. I wasn't just going to go to New Orleans and come back Monday and say, oh, wow, I heard you on WRK. I wanted her to know in the moment. So if my students are on television or if they're on radio, uh, I don't do as much with social media, but, um, but if they're on, I don't wait till, you know, the next day or until class. If they're on at six o'clock in the morning, I'm on the phone as soon as they get off the air, congratulating them on what a great job they're doing. So that's, that's kind of how my class is. That's, that's just what we do. Was that too long, Julia? <laughs> that was perfect. I appreciate all the, all the stories and everything. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Do we have uh, additional questions or things that we maybe haven't touched on, Chelsea, that uh, you want to be sure that we uh, get to? Um, I was, I'll just say I was one of those people who got to Dr. Broussard's campaigns class and I said, just so you know, I'm uh, switching to a different campaigns class, um, but I'll be here for, you know, maybe a couple of days. And, uh, but then I ended up staying and I'm really glad that I did because it was a class that challenged me. Um, and it was, um, you know, it, it made me realize how important it is to set deadlines and to meet those deadlines. And it's really like the only way that you can get through that class is to do it piece by piece and bit by bit and just keep chipping away at it. And then at the end you have this, big beautiful campaign and campaign book that you built and, and it's just incredible so and and that's the culmination of everything that you learn while at the manship school so right um that's a, yeah that's it's exciting a, that's a good point chelsea a culmination of everything you've learned in the manship school because we draw upon all of that and if students don't have advertising a background in advertising then we find somebody who can help them with their logo and so forth and so on. I'm not trying to penalize students who are doing a rudimentary logo, but I want to know your rationale for that logo. And uh, one other thing that I didn't mention is the teamwork component. Just uh, guiding students on how to work in teams and how to multitask. And, you know, I didn't talk as much about the academic component, but I give my students AP style quizzes because they need to know how to write and they need to know the rules if they're gonna be sending information out to the media. Um, and so those are, you know, and, and, and I have different kinds of strategies for dealing with conflict. My students also have to do a weekly log of what they're doing. And so that speaks to accountability. Each student has to turn in via Google Drive um, a weekly log of what they're, they've accomplished and it can be conducted research you know, that's not specific enough. Conducted research and found out what, or conducted research where and did not find anything or something to that effect. So, um, you know, I try to make sure that I take all of those things into consideration and prepare the students to be able to go out and work in an agency, to work in an organization, or to just go out and do good in the world. Here, here. Well, uh, let's see, we've got uh, a comment from Emmy. Thank, thank you all again. Thank you, Emmy. Uh, like Julia said, this confirms for me that I'm on the right path with choosing PR. I'm so excited for the fall and eventually the campaigns class. Me too. Well, I am too, I'm excited. Um, and, and, and I turned in grades when May 11th and I've done manship work every day since then. <laughs> <laughs> So when I finish this call, I'm going to binge watch something and give myself permission because that's my problem 
you know, I get so involved in my teaching and learning that I put other things aside. And so, I mean, yesterday was my birthday. I, I was on a PR area call for an hour and a half. You have a long heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I just get carried away with what I do. Thank you for the birthday. Happy birthday. I'll see. I didn't realize that either. So happy birthday. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you, Dr. Bruce Tard, for doing this. Thank you, Chelsea, for organizing it. And uh, and happy birthday to you. Uh, and uh, Julia, Emmy, uh, really great to see you here. Uh, thanks for joining us. And, you know, don't hesitate to follow up with any of us. We're, we're accessible, happy to answer any questions that you have. And, you know, and like you said, we're just so excited to see you in the fall and to get to work. So I echo everything Dean Martin said and go Tigers, go Manship. Here, here. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. <clears throat>